Hey folks, welcome back to the shrine for the hand-me-downs of the industry. From all the scattered parts, you can see there's a new project going on. What I'm trying to do is create a sphere that would be the same exact diameter as this sphere inside the combustion chamber of the engine. I need to do some fixturing and uh, I need that sphere to mate with this spherical surface precisely and uh, I can buy something similar online but based on a 3D scan uh, this surface is, uh, is a particular one around 21.8 millimeters radius and uh, nothing like that is being sold and uh, as you can see this is not a continuous surface so the valve disrupts it, the spark plug disrupts it so I really have this section here that's spherical and then this section here that is spherical it's actually really hard to measure you know if I would put an indicator here and I would start to indicate that surface I most likely can find the center line but that's not help for me so what I decided to do is create a tool post fixture with which I would be able to machine a sphere on my lathe and uh, if you look up YouTube there's a bunch of these available a lot of people use two or three different methods what I'm gonna go for is, uh, is what I already have here this is a boring head and the boring has head has a shank okay so you can see this is for R8 taper so this is designed for the Bridgeport mill and so I went ahead and I bought one that is smooth so you can see this has a smooth 7-8 shank this size is 7-8 and then this thread is uh, uh, inch and a half by 18 this threaded surface here so that mates well with a boring head if you notice this is a metric boring head so each uh, revolution of the dial is going to move the boring head uh, half a millimeter so so 10 micron is one division and there's 50 divisions here so in this boring head I can install a boring bar like so and if you imagine this is a piece of aluminum resting in a late chuck and it's spinning like so the boring head comes in and while it's spinning I can move the boring head and basically create any size of sphere within a certain limit here so if I turn this screw the boring head is gonna move right or left so the tool is gonna move in or out so this is one of the drawings that we'll be working on today this is a housing and you can see a 3D view here so it is gonna house these two bushings so the two bushings will be press fit into it. These are just 7-8 ID 1 inch OD bushings, 3 quarter inch long, wide. They're going to be housed in this housing and they're going to provide support to this shank. And so the shank is going to be able to rotate. So that's going to be this big piece of aluminum. I originally wanted to get steel but uh, couldn't get it sourced locally here within a specific time frame so I'm gonna go for the aluminum I think it's gonna provide plenty of stiffness if you look at the construction where the aluminum housing is holding it uh, it's gonna provide plenty of stiffness really what is gonna bend is the head here because of this dow, dow tail fixture and also um, the boring bar itself I found a handle so I'm gonna use the handle to operate it by hand 
and then there's a cutoff piece this is going to house the handle and it's going to tie to the end of the spindle and I also have this piece of bar I'm going to cut a piece that is going to lock this housing to the um, compound tool post on a lathe. So let's start cutting some metal. So what I did here is I just faced and turned this piece because the outside was pretty rough and rugged and the cut wasn't straight so now that's the starting piece so here's the current setup in the mill what we're gonna do is just stack this surface and then maintain the, this size it should be 60 millimeter What we're going to do first is machine this flat here to this dimension. The size should be ninety point thirty five. There we go. Ninety point thirty seven. Let's measure the other side. Ninety point thirty two. I I say that's well within tolerance. <laughs> Next, we're gonna be working on this central bore. Here's the size from the bottom surface, 4105. I'm going to drill and bore that hole.
so this part is done boring the hole there you can see the intermediate results this one already has the counter bore for the bushing I'm gonna go ahead and deburr these edges if you don't have one this is a nice deburring tool it only costs like five ten bucks and you can buy it at Home Depot so. and it's really good on aluminum and other soft materials it just makes that great job of deburring all these sharp edges so you won't cut your hand so the next thing is set it up down here and then bore this countersink out So now both of the counter bores are done. The flange has got a slip fit. I designed it with a nominal gap. So the flange goes in both sides. And then the bushing kind of goes in, catches on, but it's going to need a little press fit to go in. What happened is I was drilling from bottom up, so this was upside down, and I think the boring bar bent a little bit. So on this side, the size wasn't quite right. It was about 0.2 uh, millimeters off. So here I did another measurement. This is just a telescopic gauge. So I go and get the size and. Uh, that's a size 25, 44, 42, depending on how many times I measure. That should be good. And it's done. There you go. So this is, here's the block, got the bushings inserted, and then this is the 7-8 um, arbor that's supposed to go in. Let's see, uh, let's see if it goes in. It's got a nice machine fit. Uh, there's, there's no, there's no play. It only just nice and smooth rotation. What I did is I only made these countersinks um, three millimeters deep instead of 3.2, so they proud for about 0.2 millimeters. So what I'm gonna put the holder here, the bracket that holds the um, handle. I'm gonna squeeze it together so it's not gonna have any axial play. I'm just checking the correct height here so the block is actually gonna sit like this and it's gonna engage this slot there will be two bolts here holding it down so sorry like that and there are gonna be two bolts holding it down to this slot here and I was just wondering if it's gonna be the correct height you can see it's perfect height. So, so this height from this surface to the center line 
came out at 41.05 millimeters. I'm pretty sure it should be 41 millimeters, but there are tolerances. As you can see, it's it's nice. This part of the boring operation is done. You can see there's a hole, there's a concentric countersink. Here's the bolt I'm gonna use. It's a 5818 and goes in. Here's the socket and the socket fits comfortably. So that should be a good size. So you got these nasty, nasty burrs here and you can either set it up and then come in and use some kind of chamfering tool and you can use this the burring tool. Just like that makes a quick job of the burring. started to take shape Here's the current state. Added these two big chamfers. They really just for beautification, making it nicer looking, lighter. These two big ones here. So I got one more left this way, and then it's done. Here's the next part, it's just a piece of flat bar, cut to size, it's almost 52 millimeters, the width and thickness is 3 8 of an inch, cut it to 4 inch length, and then drill and tap 2 holes, 5 8 18, and this is the bar I'm going to use, so I'm going to go cut it to size first. There you go, 
Let's cut to size. Now I need to cut this size. There you go. This is the plate cut to size. Should be 51.8. So next thing I'm gonna do is fly cut this and this side just to make it nicer. This hole that I'm trying to tap is a 5818 and it needs a 916 drill. I don't have a 916 drill, but I have a 916 roughing end mill. Uh, where is my camera? There is my camera. Look at that. I found my camera. Awesome. So I'm just using this 916. And especially because this shank is cut down to half an inch, so it will fit in a chart. This is by pure luck that the new tab that I bought fits in my tap wrench. It's really at the limits, but it fits. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this spring load at center and put some libation on a tap on it like so and then try to hand tap it. Should have added a chamfer and this tap wrench I don't have anchor loop. This tap wrench is only about four, maybe five inches of moment arm. Okay, here's the plate, here's the bolt, and uh, it fits. Well, maybe if I do it from the large chamfer side. So, it works. Are you thinking about this pacing? I'm thinking about this pacing. So, that bolt is in. You can see this bolt lines up. And goes in as it should. There you go. Let's see if it fits. So this is my lathe tool post. I'm gonna remove the tool post. Okay, so I, I rotated the compound so it's in line with the cross line. And uh, as you can see, oh, it's missing just a handle. And so this is uh, going to be the part that I'm working on, let's say. But obviously, this is going to be my handle, but the part is going to be here. And the chuck spinning, and then I can go and just turn this by hand. And you can see that it's it's following that it's following that curvature. So right there, you can see that it's nicely following the curvature. And so moving the boring head in and out, I can adjust the diameter real precisely. 
So the next thing I got to work on is this collar here that is going to actually hold the handle so I can handle this. She is a thing of a beauty. Last uh, piece of the build. Essentially it's a holder. It's a handle clamp. I'm always in trouble when I need to name a part, put it on a print, just name the model. There's so many variations. You give one of these parts, five different engineers, they're gonna give different names for it. So uh, I'm gonna be using this two inch piece and uh, I'm gonna do some turning on the outside, facing, and then turning on the inside creating this bore to mate with this end here so again this is 7-8 and then I'm just gonna leave it on the stock and uh, that will help me to chuck it easier and then I can uh, drill and tap this hole and then drill and tap these holes and then I can cut it off and then create this slot so let's get to it. Twenty two point twenty nine. The print calls for twenty two point two three. So let's see if it fits. So it fits nicely. This is a little warm, so it will shrink over. I don't want to leave it in. So here's the arbor. Here's the piece I just machined. Listen to that. There you go. I like it. I really like this light. Makes a nice finish working on this slanted hole and the width of the part is 30 millimeters and it's 18 from this side so from the right side the center of the hole is 12 millimeters and what I did what I did is I centered the part okay and then I zeroed out my Y and now I'm coming in on the X and I'm just gonna try to eyeball the edge right there I put in a spring-loaded a spring-loaded um, center and what I'm trying to do is come in to a specific dimension and I'm gonna set the calipers to 12 millimeters from the edge I could have uh, mark this on the part but I didn't do that so I'm just gonna come down like this and 
sorry. I'm just gonna come down like that and just uh, set it at 12 millimeters plus minus one or two or two and a half should do the job so right there that's gonna be my zero so I'm just gonna go and zero out the axe so it's my zero point for drilling so this operation is calling for a 14.7 millimeter counterbore just to have a flat surface where the rod is gonna sit this is a 37 64th hand mill and it's machined down for a half an inch um, R8 collet so I'm gonna lock the quill and start milling Twenty seven sixty four drill for half an inch thirteen uh, threads. Here's the half an inch thirteen tap. It's just a tapered machinist tap, straight foot. Now take this out, put in the center, the spring loaded center. If you don't have one of these, you gotta get one. This is this is really nice. It's spring loaded. Put some libation on it. Just straight WD-40. Some people use anchor lube. I don't have any of that. Let's see if the handle is going to fit. There you go. The handle fits perfectly. In this operation I'm going to create two pockets here for the bolt heads. So I'm just going to use a 38 end mill, come down and create a pocket. Next I'm going to be drilling center hole and uh, I'm going to be using a number 7 drill to drill for quarter 20. Next I'm going to be using a 1764 drill to make room for the quarter 20 and I'm going to limit the depth so I'm only going to go down 10 millimeters. I'm going to use a quarter 20 to tap these two holes. I don't have a spring loaded center for uh, these taps so the tap doesn't have a center hole. What I did is I machined a piece of rod, it's got a hole in the center, it's pushing down on it and there's some bungees, bungees do a great job. The next is the cutoff operation, what I did is I matched the right edge of the cutting tool with this face using this block and then I zero out the readout so now I can 
So now I can crank it over to 30 millimeters. Close, uh, 30, there you go. And cut it off. The okay, last operation, I'm gonna slit this in half with the saw. Previously I touched the bottom surface of the saw to this surface here. So I made sure that they flush, locked the quill, and then basically lifted up, lifted up the table to half of this diameter and half of that. Uh, mill is at low speed. So let's see what we got. There you have it. One collar was born. I'm gonna have to deburr it, put some bolts in and uh, she's ready to go. So here's the collar or holder whatever you call it and there's the shaft. It's a nice smooth joint and fit so I need to add these screws and then I can tighten it. Okay so here are the parts for the assembly I put these screws in, they're gonna clamp on it. The heater has a perfect timing. So this goes in here, like so. There's no need to lubricate these bushings, they are self lubricated. I'm just gonna put in here like so, and next I'm gonna put on the head and the position of the head is going to define where the handle should be. Okay, so what I'm going to do is arrange this to the top and arrange the handle to the top and then just go and tighten these screws. This needs to go to the bin. I'll bring another one. Here's a new one. So I'm just gonna go and tighten up these screws like so and uh, see if it locked it up. Looks like it did. So I can I can use this as a handle to tighten up the head and you can see it's nicely nicely turning both ways so I can set this up I'll probably need to make a new cutting bit because this is gonna turn this way the, the, the piece is gonna turn this way and this cutting bit has to be perpendicular to that action so I'm gonna have to cut one of these and then put the trilobular cutting bit to the end but as far as it goes this project is complete you can see it turned out nicely so with this setup I'm gonna be able to do um, spheres within a certain size limit I'd say between 5 and 50 millimeters and uh, in the next video you will be able to see how it works so if you're interested come back thanks again for stopping by checking out this project if you like it please give me a thumbs up and if you like the channel please subscribe see you next time bye